Gonna be starting shortly. Appreciate you guys tuning in. This is Fly Trading. Special guest today, we have Bruce Bus Butler, mental health therapist. And uh, we're gonna be getting to some great topics, so just bear with us. Shout out to MFM Productions, Hannibal, we miss you guys. I had to uh, scheme and scam to get this uh, instrumental, so <laughs> it's all good. Just waiting on uh, Mr. Bruce to join in. I got some camera. What's going on, guys? Hope all is well out there. Good afternoon, guys. Hope all is well. Just waiting on uh, Mr. Butler to join. I think maybe having some difficulties getting on from his uh, from his phone from where he is. Um, but just want to welcome you guys this afternoon. Uh, thought it was important uh, that we got on and have a conversation about mental health uh, during this time, during this pandemic. Uh, he's a professional uh, counselor, and he knows you know, what's, uh, you know, you'll have an outlet to reach out to um, if you have any questions or, or, you know, anything of that nature. So if you do have questions uh, and you're sharing this or you're on the uh, Facebook or YouTube, you can just type your questions in to the uh, comment section and the question will display. Um, and we can, we, we have a section where we'll get to that, to that portion of things. So we talk about mental health, talk about maybe a little grief, um, talk about structure. I don't know. I mean, we, we are in like uncharted ter territory, you know, and, uh, you know, he brings a, a level of a, a Christian perspective as well. Um, not only is he, he my, my, my partner, my friend, um, but like I said, he's a professional counselor, so he, he can't counsel me. <laughs> That's what he told me. He couldn't. He can't counsel me. But for some, you know, all the time we get into these deep philosophical conversations. So, you know, I know he he be using techniques on me some kind of way. Hey, cousin Phyllis, what's going on? I see you. Okay, I'm glad the uh, I'm glad that's picking up. I'm glad that's picking up. But uh, real good guy, uh, dope DJ. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, so we're just waiting on them to get in so we can um, check one, two. Yeah, can you hear me? All right, there we go, Bruce. Oh, man. When I tell you Murphy's Law, we're talking Murphy's Law here because that never, ever happened. Ever. <laughs> Never, ever, ever, ever. What's no, going on, man? Looking good, man. It was the DJ that did yeah, it. Right? That's what it was. That uh, <laughs> I had the Serato open, and it took over my my sound card to hear back. I don't know what I don't know what that was about, but uh -huh. I guess it was conflicting or what have you. What's yeah. good, man? Looking good, man. What's good? Yeah, hey, I, I I appreciate it. It's it's easy to do when you don't have no hair. That's the other part. That's what I was about to say, man. You must have got you must have. Uh, one got a haircut or something and, and no, the rules over there. You know what? I started doing that myself. It's been about a year now. Mm. I went and got some clippers. I said, man, I ain't, I'm starting to look like George Jefferson. <laughs> this piece, man. I, I had to, I had to, you know, get my clippers and do it myself, man. One of my friends told me I look like Frederick Douglass, man. So <laughs> I, you know, I just have to, I have to embrace it. <laughs> hey man, I, you know, for, uh, you know, I'm going to call you Fred. You know, <laughs> um, you know, I appreciate what you do, man. I do for the community, for our people. Um, you know, this is this is really good. This yeah, good. no, that's good. That's good. And that that brings me up to you know, I just want to welcome you, and I appreciate you uh, accepting the invite for for the live. You know, yeah. I know you're a very, very, very important person. You got the bishop pulled you sometimes at the church house. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, say yeah. 
Cool. Yo, Bruce, Bruce, my Bruce, my my actual boy. Like you know, and not only that, he's a dope DJ. So you know, uh, it's I'm good to be able to. Yeah, it's it's definitely good to be able to talk to you in your professional sense of what you do and what you specialize in. Um, we have a lot of people hurting right now, and yeah. uh, you know, this quarantine is something that we've never seen as a generation. Um, you know, a lot of mental health, a lot of domestic violence. I've seen reports that that's mm -hmm. up. Uh, I've seen reports, you know, people not able to uh, get closure with loved ones dying. Uh, like I said, I, I've lost in the last 10 days about five or six people that I've known. That I've, Is that, that right? I've known. Yeah. And uh, I just kind of feel, I, I feel nothing in a sense, but I, it's like I internalize, I'm internalizing it. So. Yeah. Yeah, you know. So, um, so you almost put me in the the counseling mode just because you saying some things that they like red flags for me, not red right. flags in a in a negative sense, but just to go in and, and try to try to help. But I do, I know there are other people watching, but I do want to ask mm -hmm. you when you talk about internalizing, what do you mean? Does that mean you just you suppress it and you don't you don't make it known what you're feeling or you can't articulate what you're feeling? Yeah, it's like more of an uh, inarticulation. It's more of a, uh, you know, one of those type of things where you, I'm just, I'm just kind of numb. Like it's like a shock, yeah. and it's almost like, well, what's gonna happen next? So I need yeah. to be prepared. So right. this is kind of like, let me accept this and, and just kind of move on the best way I can, right. you know. And I think it started. You know, not to not to go on with me, like we having a session. <laughs> <laughs> when my grandfather uh, passed, and then now with right. the evidence coming out uh, and the events that led up to, you know, my mom telling me he, he he went to grab his oxygen mask, he never wears it. You know, it's a good chance that he was he was he had COVID, and we yeah. didn't know. And uh, mm -hmm. that's what's so uh, unraveling to me is the um, and not to be political or anything. Uh, the a lot of governors and there's the debate of whether or not to open the country up and I, I don't you know we don't we don't have enough tests we don't have enough of anything right now to yeah. to take that chance on on the community not to not to throw you in a political discussion <laughs> but you know it's just kind of one of those things where um, you know it's, it's scary it's a scary time it is it is and it's and you know what here's the thing I would say if I if I had a client in my office and they said what you just said Mm -hmm. It's a scary time. I would I would tell them, yes, it is, and it's okay to be afraid. Mm -hmm. It really is okay to be afraid, because right. if that's if that's your true feeling, then you have to be congruent with what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. The other part of that is whatever you're feeling, you have to seek whatever is needed to meet the need at that moment of what you're feeling. Every emotion has a need, right. and so. Unfortunately, when people feel and um, they don't know what to do with it, unfortunately, they go to other means. It's like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. It won't mm -hmm. work. It won't fulfill what you need. You have to seek and reach for what you actually need whenever you feel it. So, if now, huh? You, you're going deep here, Bruce. You're going, <laughs> you're going real deep. So, let me just tell you, like, keep that thought there. It's, yeah. This is very good because, you know, as, as a as a black male, you know, kind of coming up in the city of New Orleans, counseling is not something that we normally would seek and and talk about. I mean, you land some real feelings out there, dude. Like yeah. you land, yeah. you know, what do you mean you scared, son? You know, yeah. you, need, yeah. you know, need to man up. Like, what's yeah. you know? Yeah. So how do you how do you deal with the the taboo, you know, in our community uh, when it comes to mental health? Um, yeah. You know, as a professional, as a professional, yeah. what, what do you tell what do you tell our people without? Yeah. Without talking down to them, because this, right. I've noticed a lot of a lot of uh, people. You know, they talk down. You know, they doing it. They eat poke chops, and they got diabetes, and they're not walking. That's why they're dying. I'm like, come right. on, bro. Like, right. this ain't the time for for that. So, you know, what do you tell our people when it comes to to mental health and you know embracing those love those feelings of being afraid or saying that I'm afraid and I have yeah. a problem. You know, yeah. what what how do you what you know is there a magic magic phrase? Well, like, you know. well it, it just depends on the person and who I'm talking to. I don't have an actual cookie cutter answer to that. But what I generally say is that, unfortunately, as males, 
we have been culturally conditioned to believe that we shouldn't express or articulate emotions over time. So I know you played football and I know you played sports, you know, right. young, growing up and all. And you have sports, you have media, you have some family members, you have friends, you have people in the hood that tell you man up or put your big boy pants on mm. or, uh, you know, all the cliches. Right. And we mm. hear that over time, we're conditioned to believe that emotions are regulated or, or um, are, are for or females only. Mm -hmm. You know, so we we create this belief system and then from the belief system, we, we value it and our values move our actions and attitude around right. what it is that we believe. So if I believe that to to share with my wife that I'm hurting or I'm crying in front of her or mm -hmm. I'm afraid, if I believe that if I show her that that I'm being a punk, then I'm not going to show her that. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm gonna suppress it. Right. If I suppress it, then guess what? Over time, either I'm going to explode or implode. Mm -hmm. We're human beings. At the right. end of the day, and I hate saying that cliche at the end of the day, but I'm saying it here because it feels right. 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 It just feels right. <laughs> we're, we're human beings, and so when we don't have, and then watch this. This is the other thing. It's generational. Mm -hmm. So if, if my dad wasn't available for me to be expressive in my emotions mm -hmm. as a kid growing up, mm -hmm. I'm getting implied messages that that's not good. That's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. And if I don't see emotion from him or any other significant male in my life that's older than me, then I'm, a, I'm getting implied messages that that's not good. Mm -hmm. And ultimately what will happen is we, we, we self-destruct internally, right. you know, um, you were talking about losing some, some dear friends and family. I, um, recently, uh, was with my best friend. Uh, he had lost his dad, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not to coronavirus or anything. He, he, uh, lost his dad. It was a few weeks ago and I struggled with going to the, um, to the service. They actually had a service. Right. And I struggled. And I, I texted him. I said, the night before, I said, yo, man, I'm I'm struggling whether I should leave the house. And this is this is a long time friend. This is somebody. Yeah, oh, yeah, childhood know. friend. Right. I mean, we like brothers. Right, right. And um, I said, I'm struggling with leaving the house. So, so I think in times like these, especially when we need people, because the reality is we all are wired to need people. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go scripture on you. I ain't going to give you the address if that's okay. <laughs> but in Genesis, <laughs> God said, um, it's not good for man to be alone. Right. Let us make and dot, dot, dot. Right. Mm -hmm. and so we're wired to be connected. And so I said, you know what, here's what I'll do. I operate in wisdom. I will go, mm -hmm. but I'm, I can't stay. Right. So I went and supported him. He's my brother. I went in and I came right out and I left. Mm -hmm. I struggled with that. Right. But I wanted to let him know and you know, that he wasn't alone. Right. You so know? when you went to the funeral, you, you didn't interact with anybody. You just no. kind of paid your, yeah. so what did that do? What did that do for you? Like Man. internally, like how was that? Did you feel any closure or did what did it leave more questions? Did it leave you know, more because I didn't stay, I felt um I don't I wouldn't say I felt guilty, mm -hmm. but I just felt it did feel incomplete. Right. Because it was actually when it when his service was the same week that um Maryland had did the uh executive order, the mm -hmm. same week. Right. And uh it was not even 24 hours hot. And um so I, you know, I was trying to to adhere to the to the to the order, mm -hmm. and it just felt incomplete because I couldn't stay, um, or I decided not to stay. Um, I couldn't be with him, mm -hmm. um, my, my 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 boy, and um, and his family. And I walked in, literally stood at the casket, mm -hmm. and in the, like five seconds, I walked out. And so it couldn't right. be. It couldn't have been. 
you know, it wasn't the the norm. It wasn't, and it was weird, you know, mm. weird, man. And I felt bad about it. And I right. left, we talked a little bit. We we wrapped a little bit after um, I walked out, but mm -hmm. we, we couldn't celebrate, you know, um, a home going like we typically would, you know. Right. And, and talking about celebration, you know, in New Orleans, we like to, you know, we celebrate, uh, we celebrate our dead. I mean, we we mm -hmm. jazz funeral it up. We in mm -hmm. the street. We, uh, I mean, I think, uh, you know, the healing comes from the com the camaraderie of family and friends being together, and that's not there now. So it's it's like, what do you grab onto to for that closure? Mm -hmm. You know, like you say, you still felt a little incomplete. So yeah. Um, also, to, just to go back to, yeah. to the point of uh, you talked about not having, um, you know, a lot of people not having like their fathers to be able to express themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't want to have a tangent. Yeah, there. Right. No, no, no. This is good because I want to point out like proportionate, disproportionately, you know, a lot of African American males are incarcerated. Yeah. Um, so that leaves a, a void in the, in the community itself. You know, how do we see our way forward for like reentry and because those guys go through, you know, some major mental stuff and challenges in there, being institutionalized, you know, re-entering into the to the family or the community when you haven't been there, and uh, how does that look? And what would what would a, ses a session look like if you had to uh, talk to an individual that, you know, their dads um, or parents are incarcerated or yeah. wasn't there, or you know, how do you get to the point where you able to get the individual to feel again or accept or embrace I that they are scared or that they, you know, that those, those, those feelings, those yeah. real feelings, you yeah. know, you know, unfortunately it, you know, we, I use this word, this, this term that I'm about to share often with my clients and some understand it, some hate it. And it's mm -hmm. the word, the word is process. It's a process. And sometimes the process is long. Mm -hmm. I mean, and if you can imagine if a person, the majority of their lives where they've learned to a certain way because they were, I believe they were culturally conditioned to do something. It's going to take a lot of, you know, time and pulling back layers to get to the core authentic person, mm -hmm. you know? And I think one of the things that, um, you know, I would be tasked with walking with my client is helping them to first feel mm -hmm. and you feel in your body. So oftentimes I'll say to um, a male, I'll say, um, so what do you, I, very rarely do I say, what do you think about that? Because mm -hmm. we're good at that as males. Right. Most, right. Males, yeah, like, right. <laughs> most right. males, I won't say all, I won't, you know, paint a broad brush, but most males are good at saying, well, what do you think about that? Right. I will ask, well, what do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, 100% of the times I will get a thought answer. Mm -hmm. I very rarely get a, a feeling answer. I will even get a what I call a, a, a thinking with feelings answer. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. You know, it's a thought, but it has a feeling word in it, but it's not really a feeling. Like, mm -hmm. um, I think you don't love me. That right. feels like a feeling, you know, statement, but it's not. It's a thought. Mm -hmm. I feel unloved is a feeling statement. Right. You see what I'm right. saying? So right. I'll keep teasing out and pulling back layers, layers because some people are adverse to being. See, here's the other thing. It's so much. That's why it's a process. Here's the other thing. It takes um, takes time because in order for me to be able to articulate what I'm feeling, which I'm not used to and some people are uncomfortable to do, I have to be transparent and I have to be vulnerable. Right. So let that marinate for a minute. And just honest. <laughs> and I, I write honest with, right. So the chances that I'm going to be vulnerable, which I very, or if I've ever done, I'm not going to trust that. Right. I'm not going to trust you, Mr. Counselor, to, you know, you hear from me because I don't know what you're going to do with it. Right. I don't know if you're going to laugh at me. I don't know if you're going to reject me. I don't know if you're going to judge me. I don't know. And so that's why it's also, it's, it's time. It takes time, right. you know, it takes time to do that. And so once we work through the layers and all that, and I help the person be able to get into their body and feel, 
I'll ask them to try to bring that out and articulate. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, a lot of people, if you, if you talk to them, you say, well, how you feel about that? They go up in their head. Like it's here. It's not right. here. It's in your body. Mm -hmm. so I'll say, where do you feel it in your body? Right. Like right. What, what sensation do you feel in your body? If it's the, if they tell me I feel like butterflies or something happened in my stomach area, then that in, that's an indication to me generally that they are um, maybe with feeling anxiety or nervous. Right. If I have pain up in here or whatever, I'm, that, that usually tells me if they feel something here that usually up in the upper chest area, usually tell me that there may be some pain or some fear. Now, you, you talk about anxiety, but before we get, get there, I, I have uh, some comments on here. Will okay. Smith says uh, it's just a lot of unknowns out there right now. Definitely, that's definitely uh, the case. Uh, I don't know. Can you see those comments going across? I, 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 okay. I saw that. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, this nice young lady said you did the right thing by supporting the family. So, uh, I wonder who she is. Yeah, I wonder who she is, too. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Miss Denise? How you doing? Um, Let's see what we got here. This is what hey said, hold on, women. That, okay. The the William Smith. Yeah. The question. Did you yeah. that? I, I really want to know what is it? I'm a, looking at I'm looking at it right now. Okay. I can honestly believe there's so many black men except incarcerated at some point. If our defense, we probably keep our emotions in check. Uh so he's he's talking about the um you know the the I guess the impact of the judicial system, like the yeah, yeah, yeah. Impact, you know what I'm saying that that yeah. unknown stressor of look, eventually, you know, I'm probably gonna go to jail one day. You see, what I'm saying like growing yeah. up thinking that, you know, yeah. and it happens to uh, you know to a whole lot of us. So, you know, um, what do you what do you tell William? You know, when he when he has that level of anxiety, you know, when he's in his car and his hands on the wheel. And oh, he is that siren, you know. Yeah. And the yeah. police passes him up, but still there's a level of stress that comes along with, yeah. even though you know you didn't do nothing. And, and yeah. I know William Williams is an upstanding guy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. yeah, you know, what do you what do you do? What do you do with that? Yeah, you know, that's a hard, that's a hard question. If I had a client that come in that comes into my office and says, you know, I have this, I have this uh these moments where if the police is behind me. You know what? The siren doesn't have to be on. Right. They could just be behind. <laughs> right, right. Right. First of all, I will let them know I got it because it happens to me. I feel mm -hmm. the same way. So I can reference. You know, I have a reference. Mm -hmm. And it's scary. There, there's the word again. Right. It's scary because you don't scary. know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. right? right. And so you have to, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't. I don't know what I would tell a person around that. I would only do what I know to do because mm -hmm. it happens to me. Right. You know, I, I go in my mind and wonder, you know, what, you know, what, what's going to happen to me if I'm, you know, uh, I was pulled over, I was pulled over some time ago mm -hmm. and the officer, you know, the officer started asking me questions. That had, I mean, this is not new to anyone, but the right, 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 right. Questions that had nothing to do with why he pulled me over, mm -hmm. Not, and then they called back up, right? And I'm like, first, I didn't, you know, I, first of all, you want to do what they ask you to do, obviously, you right? Want you want to kind of comply. And be but like, at this you know. point, for us, we have to, you know, we have to. Unfortunately, we have we're subjected to this, but we have to record. Yeah, you know, I'm a big old dude, so it's like they coming up to this car already in fear. So I can't even, you know, I like to challenge some level of authority, but it's like, yeah, yeah. What do you what do you draw the line? Yeah, so. yeah. I think you gotta you gotta educate yourself up mm -hmm. and and know know your rights, you know. Um, but but if you haven't done anything, like William, he's an upstanding guy. Um, you know, and you're traveling, you don't, you just got to stay in your truth. Right. You know, I probably would say something like that. You just got to stay in your truth. I get it. You can be in your truth all day long, but if you got somebody that's, that's um, froggy, an uh, uh, officer that's froggy, and right. they, you know, you know, it's, it, I mean, a lot of our brothers and sisters, they were staying in their truth and they got harmed, you know, right. so, you know, I, that's what I would say. How can yeah, you speak sure. your truth? Because if you're nervous, then they're gonna be nervous. Right. 
you know? Right. So, if, if they, if they like, see like, like my, my friend Brandon said, never discuss your day with the officer. But sometimes they try to make you, they try to make you discuss your day. Yeah, you know, yeah. Shut yeah, up, yeah, be quiet. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. I get it. So I got two, I have two more scenarios that I want to go with you to because I these are I'm thinking of people and uh, I'm thinking of uh, you know what what do you tell what would you tell a a mom that just lost their, their child during this time and can't um can't congregate yeah. to, for that for that like what what's okay and what's what's that process gonna look like for her and what what are some of the things that you know she can probably look up or or you know maybe go back and when, when you're not here or when the council is not available mm -hmm. you know what are, what are some of the things that are resources that she can so, put on so here's the thing this is what i meant earlier about that genesis that that genesis text that i gave you about when, mm -hmm. when i said it's not good for man to be alone mm -hmm. i think this is general if this is for anyone you know anyone that's breathing and walking and chewing gum at the same time I believe everyone should live life in consultation. Mm -hmm. Everyone should have someone that they can go to that's a confidant or not even necessarily a confidant, but someone that they can reach out to in a moment's notice and say, hey, I'm hurting. So if, if I wasn't available, here's what, I, as a matter of fact, I was on a, um, uh, with one of my colleagues, I was on a, a, a Zoom meeting. We, we did something free for, some of our clients yesterday mm -hmm. where they can just come in and talk. We talk some positive things around the COVID mm -hmm. and, um, um, and at the end I told them, I said, listen, after we hang up, um, you all talked about some things that may have been raw for you. Mm -hmm. After we hang up, call your support, call somebody that, that you can talk to maybe have a coffee with or have dinner with or, well, we, we practice in um, um, distancing, so we can't have dinner with, but call someone and and um, and let them know what's happening for you. So I would say make sure you have a support system if you can, um, whether it's the church, the church, if you're in a good church, that's always mm. plus. Uh, but certainly family members and friends that you can talk to and say, I'm hurting. Right. You know, it's this is hard, man, for to lose somebody at a time like this where you can't have people to surround you and support you. That is hard. Right. That is hard. And right. I would wish that on anyone. Somebody that lost their parents as well, lost both their parents. Like, you know, that what, what do you what do you grab? You know, what do you grab? Yeah. To? yeah. So here's the thing. I would in the meantime, first of all, you know, we all in these times where we I think we're going through a lot. I'll say that. I think we're going through a lot internally. And this is what I mean. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do not realize how much they are grieving right now. Right. It's all a shock because I, I, it hasn't really hit me all the way yet. Yep. It's still a shock. So, so you take that. People are grieving because the norm is gone. Mm -hmm. And loss of anything that's been important to you even the church like church gathering yeah. like yeah. people would use that and, and yeah, yeah. anything and of loss of importance is grief right you will grieve that and right. here's the tricky thing about grief it has its own agenda it comes mm -hmm. it goes oh yeah you know it's not you know you have the steps of grief anger denial you know and so on it's not linear in steps it can you can bounce around you can be in denial you can be in acceptance you can be in anger you know and so unfortunately some people are not aware that they're grieving right now mm -hmm. because we've lost our norm and i say we because i'm in the boat too right you know we've lost our norm we've lost the way in which we lived right, right. and then you add on top of that you lost somebody mm -hmm. Oh man, that's devastating. Right. And I'm, and here's something that's really, you know, breaks my heart for a lot of people. I, I think about people who are single as well. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm not going off a tangent based on- No, you're no, no, it's, you're good, you're good. Okay. Yeah. I, I, it, people who are single have it even, I mean, being alone is, being in isolation is torturous. Mm -hmm. So 
so I was uh, talking to a member at my church, um, a senior from my church, um, yeah. I think early, uh, early last week, over, over the weekend, last week sometime. And um, she told me that, you know, she she just had a breakdown. Mm -hmm. She said, I had, a, I had a breakdown because I couldn't deal with this isolation. It's, it's but so many things that you can watch, it's but so many things that you can do mm -hmm. until you realize and you're aware, I can't reach, you know, I can't touch anyone. I can't right. reach out, and you know, it's hard. And so, you know, just me talking with her, she said to me, you know, I appreciate it, thank you. Mm -hmm. But the call and the and the conversation, especially with seniors, is a is a need, you know. Right. But but the people are elderly and talking to yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. People who yeah. are, are 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 single, most people, not all, but most people who are single, mm -hmm. they're struggling, man. Right. They're struggling. Right. They're struggling. So, so yeah, go I ahead. know, you know, with all this, you know, you have the grief, you know, you have people behave when when grief happens, their behavior is not normal, you know. Um, they reach out to different things. They reach out to different vices. They reach out to, they're just mm -hmm. vulnerable, right? So there was a report that most Americans are gravitating to porn and also liquor. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm a big advocate of, you know, a couple of drinks in there, but <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what's, what's like, what's a red flag? Like, let's say your partner or uh, somebody sees you and, and you just have, you just on like these the porn sites or you just like what what are some indicators and what are some things that that you can do to to to, to help people that are struggling with that level of addiction or that vice uh to kind of give them some level of comfort or you know the drinking like what how do you structure that conversation you so first I want to say how do you confront yeah 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 first like, i want to first i want to say this mm -hmm. i i don't there may be people in your audience that's watching right now and listening. Right. I I don't want to create. We have some church folks in the in the building. Huh? Say that again. There, there's some church folks in the building. Yeah, no, no, no. What I want to say is, I don't want to create people to be hyper, um, hyper vigilant or okay. um, hyper. You know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to create anxiety. But even for yourself, like you, like man, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. You know what? What am I doing right now? Like, how do you, how do you come to grips with? Like, I got a problem. Like, what? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna answer your question. I just mm -hmm. wanna, I wanna be, just wanna put that out there because right. what I'm gonna say, I don't want people to be so watchful that they forget about doing really good self care for themselves. Mm -hmm. But right. here's what I wanna say. I preface, I preface that what I'm about to say with that. And here's what I want to say. This, you know, this time right now where we're in, where we have to self quarantine and isolate, mm -hmm. those who are in recovery or are recovering mm -hmm. are most susceptible. Right. Because most of the time, maybe not drinking, but most of the time, the vices are done in isolation. Right. You know, the vices are, and, and so because we have to self quarantine, guess what? We're, yeah, we're, we're most susceptible. Right. You know? um, and that's not for everyone. That I just mm -hmm. want to say that's not for everyone. Some people are on a good recovery road and have good traction around recovery. So mm -hmm. uh, just, I don't know if the audience knows. So I specialize in, I think this is why. I, Cedric asked me the question. <laughs> yeah, I should have, I should have caveated the camp. <laughs> I'm certified and specialized in um, sex addiction. Uh, so I, I work with adult males and females. Um, I do couples work as well. So everything I do is not around sex addiction, but that's my cert that's part of that's one of my certifications in that. And I work with partners or two betrayed. I work with betrayed partners. And the mm -hmm. trauma, relational trauma around that. So, so that's why I gave that that little blurb prior to me saying that this is a really hard time because unless they have really good work mm -hmm. that they've done and support, um, they're they're most susceptible. Right. And so I think you have some questions. I don't know. 
Uh, no, a few comments that came in. Okay. Uh, a few people interacting. Yeah. And yeah. they agree, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And so, so in terms of, in terms of what's happening to that person, if like say the person is not alone and you have a family member in the home, um, yeah, you can confront, but mm -hmm. nine out of 10, the person that's in that, that, that may be indulging in those things, whatever their vice may be, they, they're going to deny it. Mm -hmm. They're going to be in their attic brain and they're going to deny it. The attic brain is just, you know, it, 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 Gaslights. So that's a real. That's a real thing. I mean, yeah. that's a real medical term. Like that's yeah. a real addict brain. Like you know, there's a there's a way to to just kind of identify what an addict brain is. Uh, there's some things that you accept when you when you when you diagnose somebody having an addict brain. Mm -hmm. Like how does that work? I'm not. I'm not. I'm well, not real. So when I say addict brain, the addict brain is it's just an just to, thank you for saying that because not everyone would under, may understand that. So basically, mm -hmm. the addict brain is really impaired thinking, mm -hmm. or it could be absolute thinking. It's distorted thinking. Mm -hmm. It rationalizes. Mm -hmm. it, it's entitled, narcissistic. Mm -hmm. That kind of mindset and air about that person. That's what I mean by addict brain. Okay. It get you know it gas the person will gaslight gaslighting meaning. Hey, look at over here. I'm doing this, but really, I'm over here doing this. So they're running rackets, basically. Yeah, running yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah, Deception, lying. You know, they got the candy. They got the candy shop set up up front, but they're running that legal gambling spot. You got back. it, man. You I got, got it. it. <laughs> right. right. See everything you get. You know. Right. Right. Um, I'm legit know, over don't here. Believe, don't believe your lying eyes. You know. Right. <laughs> I got you. That that's it, man. And so you can confront, but it's gonna be unless the person gets to a place where they understand that the vice, whatever it is that they are using is a pseudo good connection and it's not real. It's a false um, connection. Cause remember it all, it goes back to that Genesis chapter that I told you mm -hmm. that, that we were wired to connect. And when we can't find a connection, a good connection, we're mm -hmm. going to seek something to get a good connection. Right. And so that's what that's again the attic brain. I'm gonna get a good connection through this. Mm -hmm. I won't be rejected. I um I'll be accepted. I will be loved. And and the person is drawn in and tricked to believe that it will help them all along. Is it's a lie. It, it's yeah. not gonna work, you know. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's an illness. Addiction is an illness. Right. It is an illness and it it, it it it's it's all here gotcha how much hits in the brain it's all here so i would say this this is what i'll say i don't want to be all negative and no 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 that's, that's you good know, you know um it, there's hope around that and mm -hmm. i i believe this is a good time to change that so let's say because we're on this track about addiction mm -hmm. one of the things that i do with my clients um I will help them define what their sobriety is. Mm -hmm. That's so key. I help them define what their sobriety is. And essentially what they're doing is they're saying, these are the behaviors I've done. And these are the things that I want to abstain from. So while I not focus on that with them, I'll help them to develop, um, to begin to develop a new uh, paradigm. Mm -hmm for their lives. So I say, okay, what are some things that you enjoy doing? What are some things that you can learn about yourself? What are some things how you can see yourself differently? And you and you create activities through those things. You create things that you can do around those things. Right. In doing that, the more you do the healthy behavior stuff, our brain is, I'm getting ready to throw a clinical term, and, your audience are a student. I'm sure they probably already know, mm -hmm. but the brain is plastic. It's the neuroplasticity of our brain simply means that it can change mm -hmm. and we can, we can rewire. And so when we, we, we rewire what we essentially do, we, we do a new behavior. And the more we do that, we strengthen that behavior and the behaviors that we don't want to do the, the, the power of that, or the, the, yeah, the power, it weakens. Right. But here's where it's an illness and it, it's all here. It's still there, mm -hmm. which makes the person susceptible. 
Right. It hasn't gone. It's just weakened. Neural pathways is what I'm talking about. Okay. So the neural pathway is weakened while you're doing these healthy behaviors and you're doing new things and you're living a different life. But unfortunately, you're going to be in recovery for a long time because you still got that unused, weakened neural pathway that's there that could just like a breach dam can be opened up mm -hmm. by unwanted feelings and unwanted thoughts. There goes the feelings again. Right. You see? That's a lot, man. That's it, a is. Lot. Yeah. it is. Yeah. So Denise, Denise said regarding the alcohol and sex addiction, it, uh, addiction, uh, addiction. addiction uh, issues during the crisis, therapists are still available uh, virtually. So yes, uh, oh, please reach out. Yeah. Yeah. Please reach out and, uh, you know, get some help. Find somebody yep. to talk That's to. right. That's a good I don't know how your license work though, Bruce, but you know, uh, you know, you well, might right have now, to right now, the, um, states are, I read somewhere states are, are relaxing the, even if people are in different states that they're relaxing state because different states have different, uh, laws and rules about, doing cross state counseling. But mm -hmm. um, for now, I don't know when it'll end, but right now, uh, different states are doing uh, away or not doing away, but relaxing the virtual um, uh, counseling, uh, uh, you know, opportunities that are there for people who need it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's available. It, it, you know, I, that's a good point. I think it's good for people to reach out. Right. To reach out. It, and you know what? That's easier said than done. It really is easier said than done. I remember when I was on staff before I became a counselor uh, full time, I was on staff at my church. And um, I remember I was trying to help a family. You know, I'm always trying to help families and, and adolescents and all that. And one of the things that I bumped my head up against was the it was hard to find resources in right. our community. Right. People we can trust. Yeah. Right. Right. People we can trust. Oh, right. man, people we can trust. And so, you know, I, I think it's it's a good thing to be able to have resources and find where those resources are. Um, always check your church. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, if um, you know, reach out to people, reach out to the primary care, you know, mm -hmm. um, as well. So see, see what your insurance offers. I know a lot of people. Yeah. Have insurance yeah. Yeah. Offer maybe. yeah. Yeah. Yeah seven, eight mm -hmm. sessions, maybe, um, see, you know, if they can pay it and it may be a deductible or something, but how can, how can people reach you, Bruce? Because I mean, you, you're a black guy, uh, you know, you grew up in, in DC. I mean, you, you, you relatable. So, <laughs> you know, how your schedule looking, um, is there a way? Man, from you know what? Um, I don't mind people. I, well, I'll give my email address and my, um, our website. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm full, believe it or not. Right, man. Am I, I? I'm thankful. I'm. I'm grateful that I'm full. Um, I have no space. Um, if I added more people, then I would be doing the exact opposite as I'm. What I'm telling my clients to do. Right, and that's right. Self care. Right. And so, um, but I don't mind um, consulting with someone and maybe mm -hmm. trying to find resources. I don't mind being a resource hub. Right. Now I'll put your firm down uh down below. Yeah, so. that's yeah, okay. yeah, that's the okay. that's our okay. website. Yeah, if you Google Bruce Butler and put in relational recovery, yeah, you can pull up his bio, his credentials, and all that other good stuff. Man. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That'll work, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, what, what 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 do I need to do to get another general session like this with you, man? Oh man, ask questions and you know, kind of just I mean, you know, have someone to I mean, something to tune into or uh, talk with during this time. I mean, I, I appreciate it though, Bruce. Like from the bottom of my heart, bro. Like seriously. Yeah. 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 No, no, just you do do what you did. You know, okay. I know it was kind of challenging the first time you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> no, Look, but you know to... what? I'm a behind the scenes type of person. Yeah. So you know, for this, for me, for this, you see, what I'm saying, I'm really. You know, you know I'm private, man. You know how private I am. So I, I already know, you know, you you rock like that too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah and it's yeah. a level of like, okay, you know, I, I've I've hid behind stuff for so long, but now it's like, you know, even with you, even with you know my channel, Fly Traders, with the stock yeah. stuff, yeah. you know, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm available, but I'm not gonna I'm not putting it out there and branding it and marketing it like I I should be to help people. I'm not gonna chase you around or. 
you yeah. know, be, a, be the front guy, be the head person, right. you know. So right. now I right. get it. I yeah, now I get it. So, hey man, listen, I I you know I was um in preparation. Yeah, I prepared. Um, that's just who I am. Got to know who you are, man. You got to know who right. you are. So in my preparation, um, I I came up with some things that if you want me to share, I can share in terms of you know how to continue to 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 have a good well being and resiliency mm -hmm. during this time because it's hard, man. And I just if you want, if not, I won't share. I, maybe the next time. Yeah, we can we can get in there. I have I've crystal crystal have a good good point too. Uh oh, uh, crystal. talking about addiction, Hi, crystal. Uh, food, uh, and crystal doing God's work out there. So she in the <laughs> medical field, nurse, and um, you know on the front lines there. So uh, she talked about food as well yep. being a, a type of addiction. Uh, yep. I have any. Uh, so what what do you say about her question there? So there's something that's under first of all everyone has to first of all good question crystal very good very good question and well point actually it was a good right. point that you made right um that's absolutely true um i was i'm reading a book um for my i have a lot of clients that i'm glad you said book because i was going to ask you about what book yeah i'm about. reading a book now, um, <laughs> one of my client a few of my clients are work work addicts see that's another one they're workaholics mm -hmm. right and um i read something where it said that we have to work and we have to eat, mm -hmm. right? And so if that be the case, what would be the answer to a food addiction? And mm -hmm. I believe with all addictions, but more specifically to Crystal's point, we have to find out what's underneath of that that's driving that need to feel comfort through food. Because what happens is the person gets comfort through food. And then remember, I talked about the neural pathways in the brain right. and all that. Right. The person gets dopamine in the uh, chemical so dopamine. It's the, same, it's the same chemical that's released. Anytime. Man, yes. Okay. But the, more, right. the, the more you do it, mm -hmm. your brain's another chemical that goes through the brain and says, remember this. Because we need this next time. Right. It made you feel Whatever good. That next time in, <laughs> it's like, okay, it's time to eat. You know, it's right. time to eat, eat, eat. And the more you do that, the wider the neural pathway gets. Mm -hmm. So the neural pathway normally is, I would say, like a, a one lane highway. Right. The more you do that behavior, eat, we, you know, gambling, uh, uh, you know, all, all of the addictions, the neural pathway widens. Mm -hmm. So it's like a it's like a it's like a, a a rubber band, a brand new rubber band. If you stretch it, yeah, it's gonna get big than its normal shape, but then it kind of shrinks back mm -hmm. when it's not being utilized like that. You see what I'm saying? Well, what, are there any type of uh, medicine or natural herb that curbs that type of thing? Um, uh, if they're eating, you're talking about the eating. You're talking about the eating? Yeah, the eating, eating itself. Oh, no, even that, I'm not a specialist. In that, I'm not a specialist okay. in that area. Um, right. If there is, I'm not aware. I'm, there probably is, but I'm okay. not. I couldn't. I'm not competent to. to yeah, speak. no, I got you. I got you. I, just yeah, I can only you. give you like general kind of uh, 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 information on that. Um, gotcha. gotcha. But it, but it is something. Even if so, that that's a good point too, because you know a person can can do those new behaviors through that to help with that element. However, the person needs talk therapy and some other kind of therapy with a with a clinician to help them understand what is it that helps, what is it that got them to that point? Right. What is it that got them to that, you know, to the I know a lot of a lot of people, you know, with the with the uh, legalization of marijuana and stuff like that, you know, a lot of, I know a lot of people that just blow. I mean, it was blowing before it was kind of legal. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean I, of course there's some unhealthy things that happen. You know, you need our lungs and different things like that. But I didn't know if that was one of the things that kind of curb those. Uh, no, I don't know. Things, but yeah, I, no, I got you. Yeah, I don't know yeah. the research, if there's research on that or not. And right. I, I saw the latter part of um, Crystal's uh, question. Or question. Mm -hmm. And if, I, if someone came into my office and they needed a specialist, I would refer them out to someone gotcha. that would help them better than I could. So gotcha. I think that would, that's what I would have done. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Bruce. Well, thank you, man. I, you you even got my old teacher on here, Miss Stewart. What's going on, Miss Stewart? I don't know if you're Ms. still on. Miss Stewart. Here. God bless you. <laughs> great, 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 
Frederick, Look, I got a Frederick. funny story about Mr. Stewart. That was my uh, algebra teacher, and I went to the New Orleans Science and Math High School for half of the day. So uh -huh. I stopped going to the Science and Math High School, and I ended up in her class. And you know, I'm I'm in there like you know, I know I know my stuff. So she gave me a few problems that she I guess knew that I was gonna trip me up, and uh, got me up there. I wrote out like the long equation list. And she was like wrong, wrong. <laughs> So uh, confident. We're all so confident, man. I, I appreciate you, Mister. She wanted to, you know, being like one of our better teachers and really, really cared. And you know, I even got a referral one time. My yeah. dad from school. Yeah. Yeah. She had a piece of paper in her hand, and I got it out of here. I guess she wasn't supposed to do that. I didn't know. But anyway, <laughs> it's like, I ain't gonna never forget that. I ain't gonna never forget that. So, said, so you made my point again mm -hmm. that I talked about earlier that we we relationships are so important about all of what we're experiencing right that it's it's i mean that's a relationship and you still got a relationship with her that's miss stewart right there she said i'm still here what's going on miss stewart yeah, I hope I'm I'm Stuart. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's Stuart davis i'm sorry yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. that's good man yeah hold on i'm trying to get not a clinical term either yeah, yeah. um let's see what elena elena real quick uh, schedule care mother, no depression, anxiety, and kids. They uh, was coping strategy, mental exercises you can suggest. Uh, suggestion for mental exercise, some practice, some homework. She's looking for homework. She's a teacher. Oh, she's she, looking for some homework. Uh, for her oh, kids. So, homework in terms of outside uh, of education, well, kind just, of homework just, learning, or noticing she noticing depression and anxiety amongst kids in general. And uh, what are some coping strategies and mental exercises that you know, can, that you know i think okay so i'll start with anxiety because that's prevalent a, a lot a lot of people um breathing exercising exercises is good for anyone with anxiety mm -hmm. so typically if i have someone that comes into to my office that um that that i notice that they are they're anxious or they inform me that they are actually um they are with anxiety I would work with them on breathing techniques like deep breathing. Mm -hmm. So typically what I would do is I would have them put their their hand over their belly button, uh, both hands over their belly button, and then I would count with them as they inhale and exhale. Right. And I'll do a few cycles of that. I will also ask them as they are breathing, doing the deep breathing, I would ask them to close their eyes and just imagine that there's a container of some sort that they come up with and just imagine that air is going, as they're doing their breathing, air is going in as they inhale and air is coming out of that container as they exhale. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll do that kind of deep, that's a really simple thing that you can do that anywhere. And then there's another one that I really, really like. I actually use it, and, and by the way, I'm human, so I have issues as well. <laughs> and I right. just have issues, I have my challenges as well. So like, mm -hmm. for example, um, for whatever reason, when I fly, I can't sit by the window anymore. Right. I have to sit in the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> right. I feel like, you know, it's just coming down on me, right? right? So one of the things that I do, I'll say this, and I'll tell my clients to do this as well, is use your five senses. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll say something like, okay, I want you to get settled in your chair, wherever you are, and just kind of let your body relax and kind of stay, get focused. And this is a, a centering kind of um, exercise. So I'll say, okay, I want you to, I want you to identify five different objects and I want you to name them, mm -hmm. give them, you know, I want you to name five different objects. And then I'll say, okay, now I want you to take a moment and I want you to listen for four different things if, if you're in a place where you can do that and so you're actually starting to pay attention and be present about what you hear mm -hmm. and then i'll ask them to touch so tactile three different things and give names to them what how does it feel you know and then i'll say i want you to see if you can smell two different things you know a perfume or a flower or whatever and then one thing you can taste and so I would actually have my clients go through that. And then afterwards, I'll say, okay, now I want you to deep, briefly, and exhale and all that. And um, for that time being, they are relaxed. They are, um, they are a little 
calmer, if you would. It doesn't take it away, but it right. helps you to get to a place where you can maybe talk it through or you may be able to get some support. It's feeling right. like something solid is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's around the anxiety. That's what I typically would do. As And she can do that with her kids if she wanted to. It might be even fun. Um, exercise and a learning right. experience as well. Just the, they say, just the kids, the kids come up with. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, as far as depression, I, all of these, anxiety and depression, I, first I would say seek professional help. Mm -hmm. I definitely would say that. Ideally, a psychiatrist or, 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 or a um, psychologist, um, but definitely seek help. In the meantime, as you come to your own rescue, um, that breathing exercise and all that exercise that I just shared about anxiety, but get up, get moving with regards to depression, because depression will cause you to like not want to do anything. You're demotivated. Right. In fact, what typically happens, a person will feel hopeless. Mm -hmm. And they send chemicals to their body, and, right. uh, and it's just like workers in your body say, "Okay, shut it down." Right. And, and, and it's and in a black hole. Right. right. You know, and, and right. so you know, get up, try to do some things. I know it's hard to try to be in the new norm or to to, to do norm, but if you got up at seven o'clock in the morning, get up, and keep getting up like that. Keep. You know what I almost did today? Mm. I almost put some cologne on today. <laughs> and I Denise know might have, she probably would appreciate it, but you know, <laughs> but see, that, right? And I made part right. of it so often. I did it right, last right. week because right. you know, I I do want some semblance of normalcy in this new norm. Yeah. Um, but do different things. Get up. Get out. You mm -hmm. know, talk it through. And I, it, you know, that um, what's her name? Elena is her name. Elena. Yeah. Jackson. Elena. Yeah. Miss Jackson. If, if if oh if you have a son. Please nurture and affirm that it's okay for him to say how he feels. Mm -hmm. To that it's okay for him to to express whatever he feels. I'm scared. I'm not feeling well, or whatever, because that's what's going to be helpful as well to help come out of those funks and those moods. But definitely, first professional help uh, if medication is needed. That plus, you know, talk therapy as well is, is mm -hmm. good. A combination as well. If, if if you have access to that, I know everyone gotcha. doesn't have access to that. Gotcha. Well, Bruce, look, I don't want to. I don't want to even want to look, man. We got to go all day, day, man. We yeah, go. Man, man. I know, man. I know. We we be going all day anyway. Period. Just kind of <laughs> chilling. Hey, look, talk we ain't even talk about that yet. <laughs> look, that's what I was gonna say. Next, look, we got to get you on the uh, the ones and twos, bro, because. You know, you've been sitting back hiding, you know, and I've been spir uh, sporadically coming in and out, but I got to get you on yeah. the ones and twos, man. Bruce is an excellent, excellent DJ. Yeah. Like, his, his taste is real, like, open, jazzy. Like, he gets you moving. It's a fun set, you know, and, uh, you know, we've, we've done gigs together and everything, and it's it's been cool, man. It's been cool, this yeah. whole journey with you. I mean, they were one of Bruce and his mom were one of the first people to embrace me when I got to D.C. Uh, you know, I met your mom when I was at the agency. And, um, you know, I heard, heard this lady yelling from this big old shuttle van, like, she was like, boy, come here. And I was like, who is that? Like, <laughs> hey, look, we're like night and day, man. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. Your mom is like big. Her personality is like, woo, you know, and I got a pretty personality too, but her personality is like, woo. So, you know, she was uh, making fun of me in front of uh, some colleagues and stuff on the on the uh, on the van. And I love her, love her to death. Like love her to this day. So, yeah, yeah man, we got to do this again. I got to get you on the ones. And, you got anything for us on the ones and twos now? You got anything set up? Oh, it's not even fired up, man. Oh, you're not fired up? Yeah, okay. Like right. well, we got to get back on here, man, and, and get the people what they want, man. Get some good. Yeah, we can, we can go back and forth. That's fine. You yeah, know, that's cool. really, and I think you know, I think it's if I if I may, I think it's I think it's pretty cool that. Our colleagues in the DJ game is is doing what they're doing. Right. Um, you know, not just D Nice. D Nice is doing a great job as well. He's opened up a lot of things for DJs as well. Right. Um, and ideas actually. But you know, I think it's cool that they do that they're doing that because you know what? Man, music moves, man. Yeah. Music moves. Yeah. You know, if you if you polled the people online right now. And ask what is their favorite song and why? That I'm that telling you. Yeah, that goes that go viral real quick. Man, huh? 
That's, that'll go viral real quick. Oh, you know, man. Like, right. Right? Right. Music moves, man. And so that's another thing. You know, have, listen to some music. You oh. know, I saw... Um, I saw a post you did not too long ago, and a young lady said that, I think you said you were tired of uh, doing the news thing, and, and the young lady I saw said that she was listening to some music in the house. Oh, yeah, it yeah. It just Ms. makes Jackson, a Colorado. difference, man. Yeah. Yeah, it makes a real difference, man. Music yeah, is a thing. Gotcha. Cool, man. Well, yeah, they got me, uh, my teacher got me full over here. She almost made me cry. Oh, so, cry, uh, man. Cry, man. <laughs> Everybody, you know, saying great information and, you know, <laughs> dead, you know, so I just wanted to display their comments and stuff, man. But she Bruce, proud of I you, man. She's proud and, of you, uh, man. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good, man. You know, we get it out the mud where we come from, man. It was like, lean on me sometime <laughs> up in that place. But it's all good. But uh, <laughs> look, Bruce, thank you, man. Let's, let's try to do this again. And, um, yeah. You know, tell Denise I appreciate her uh, loaning you to me for a minute. And yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Where we know, go? Where we gonna go? That, you know, <laughs> hey, but you know, I, I, look, we we got to talk online because I I, didn't, I got a hideout up in here. I just thought we were hot. So it's all good, man. But yeah, yeah, that's cool. Thank you guys for joining in. Uh, if you could subscribe to our page, my page is Fly Traders. Uh, on YouTube, if you type in Fly Traders, please subscribe. You'll see the plane. Uh, Bruce, what's your what's your handles on on um, uh, Twitter? Social, anything? Social. On social, you mean? Social, yeah, social. Yeah, media. okay. Um, so it's it's complicated, but here we go. So Facebook is Bruce Butler. Okay. Um, I don't have my face on it. My um, avatar is uh, the District of Columbia, mm -hmm. um, and then. Um, Instagram is at DJ Max 88. That's M A X X, uh, two X's, right? Yeah, two X's. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sid. And and likewise with um with uh Twitter. Uh, although I don't use Twitter much, and then I just started Twitch. Oh that's that, Twitch, yeah, yeah. Twitch, yeah. DJ Max DJ Max 88 underscore is Twitch. Oh, you're on Mixcloud? You got any mixes on Mixcloud? Oh, Mixcloud, yep. DJ Max. Um I don't know if the 88's on there, but it may be. I, I try to stay consistent, but yeah, I'm mixed cloud. I'm on there. I got some mixes up there. Gotcha. Um, yeah, actually, I'm getting ready to post another one soon. So. All right, man. Yeah. Tell Isaiah I got to get him on that too. DJ Baby. DJ yeah. Baby up the city. He yeah. turned the city up, man. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. you know, let and him he said, know. I wanted to say this lastly, man, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I cannot wait for things like sports, because I'm a sports guy. I love sports. Right. I cannot wait for that. I cannot wait to connect with you and hang out. And I cannot connect. Cannot wait to connect with family and all that. I cannot wait for those things. But what I can wait for is this to be over. So I'm going to keep my distance, man. Right. Absolutely. You got it. And that's another thing, guys. And that's what I say. Be patient, man. Be right. patient. Right. You know, be patient. Yeah. Y'all yeah, yeah, make sure y'all take every necessary precaution. Like I said, the numbers are disproportion disproportionate amongst our community. So when you go out, bring your mask, wash your hands, gloves. Yeah. Yeah. And don't don't meet up with the, with the elderly, older people. Try to find another way to, to reach out to them. But Bruce, thank you, man. You can catch, yeah, my, pleasure. catch my mixes too on uh, WeCoolingDJs.com. WeCoolingDJs.com. And for the people that ask for some sauce, I have some sauce that I was able to kind of secure down. Um, that I, I I could ship out to you too. So uh, I saw that that was a comment earlier. They was like, I need some sauce. I guess they run out of oh, sauce. I need the sauce. Yeah, that DJ sauce, man. That New Orleans, put that New Orleans on them. Yeah. But uh, thanks, Bruce. I appreciate hey, man, it. Man. Appreciate what you do, said. Appreciate Definitely what you do. do and we gonna we gonna we gonna rock it out, man. We get together and uh, rock it out online. Yeah, yeah. I catch up with you later on. Absolutely. All right, cool. Y'all have a good evening, guys. Yeah, everyone, take care. All right, All right now.